Hey, Cypher here. The Epic Western is back! This movie isn't some farce like The Revenant, or fun B-movie stuff like these recent ones. You know, Ballad of Lefty Brown, The Duel, Bone Tomahawk, Hateful Eight, and In a Valley of Violence. Those are fun, but, you know, they're kind of just B-movies. And no, Django Unchained is not a Western, even though it has Western trappings. That's like calling Star Wars a Western. I guess you could count the Magnificent Seven remake? But let's all collectively agree to forget that one. We haven't seen a proper epic western since Open Range. If you can tell, I kind of love westerns, even though they dried up for a good reason. The common clay of the new west. You know. Morons. <laughs> Turner, you're irrelevant. So let's talk about Hostiles. They're doing something interesting with this movie. The plot is about a U.S. cavalry captain in 1892 who is ordered to escort some former enemies. Uh, with respect, sir, I'm not leading that cutthroat and his brood of bastards and bitches anywhere. I'm afraid it's an order. Namely, a family of a fearful Cheyenne chieftain, back to their homeland in Montana from his post in New Mexico. Along the way, they go on a bit of an odyssey, working through the last vestiges of violence in the frontier. They fight Comanches, murderers, slavers, and cowboys in startlingly brutal incidents that simply dissolve into the background once finished. You're left with this hollow feeling, but the persistent understanding that life will go on. Now, some of you might have already spotted some cracks in the plot from my synopsis. Remember, it's supposed to take place in 1892, so the Comanche had long since been subdued. Their last gasp of independent raiding was in the late 1870s, so this is about 20 years out of place. It also shows Apaches being rounded up by soldiers, which is also an anachronism, given Geronimo was captured in 1886. And he was basically the last one, though there were some holdout stuff like the Apache Kid. The Northern Cheyenne Exodus had ended in 1879, and none of them were ever kept in New Mexico. The army would have sent them to Florida or Indian Territory if they were POWs like Geronimo. For instance, Howling Wolf, not that one, a Cheyenne prisoner of war, was kept at Fort Marion just like Geronimo. The slavers thing is also kind of weird, because there's basically no record of such raids happening after the 1870s. Finally, in 1892, railroads crisscrossed the country, so riding horseback would have been silly. To go from New Mexico to Montana, they could have taken the Southern Pacific or Santa Fe railroads east or west and connected with the Northern Pacific. Easy peasy. No need for some odyssey. So you see, the problem with the film is that it makes us believe that this violence was happening long after it was not. Practically speaking, they could have made it in 1882 instead of 1892 and solved the problem. Not a difficult correction to make. Look, I fixed your movie. But there's something I've been purposefully neglecting here. This movie makes no claim to accuracy, nor does it have any clear basis. It is historical fiction. If we just imagine the date as 1882, this stuff makes a little more sense. Then we get to go into the really juicy stuff. You see, the movie is about overcoming hate. There ain't enough punishment for his kind. Real hate. The kind that only comes with an intimate relationship with one's enemy. I hate him. I got a war bag of reasons to hate them. The characters constantly express their prejudices, but they do not say these things out of ignorance. Instead, they hate each other because of prolonged warfare. You own your life. Spitting on your men's graves, saving this savage, and if you don't avenge them, then what did they die for? They know each other. They know each other well. Instead of making hate into some alien thing that needs to be excised, the entire movie toys with that hatred. It just riles me the way the government treats them, that's all. They're human beings, they deserve to be treated as such. And need I mention they were here first? That do they're do. dispossessed at our hand and have received- That's enough. enough! Making the viewer come to understand it. We start with this aristocratic publisher making fun of the whole dichotomy of hate. No, he's a butcher. And the two of you ought to get along just fine. Shut the hell up, you fucking... But this comes right after we've watched Comanches raiding and killing a family. 
That is what's powerful about this film. It is about understanding hate so that we may overcome it. Niha, a hard summon. Ninja at the moment. That is something that so many historians struggle with. It is all too easy to demonize people, but to make us understand, even sympathize with the devil, that is truly powerful history. Thank you.